Okay, folks, welcome to this webinar hosted by FX Street on the 27th of November 2018. Um, I'm sitting um, uh, here in Bali in, uh, in Indonesia, uh, and it's a rain season, and so it's, uh, it's really, really wet. Uh, but it's lovely. The temperature's nice, and it's not too humid, so so things are good. But I have a bit of a a cold, so I apologize if my voice sounds a little bit off. Um, so if uh, if so, please type in a message, and I'll um, be sure to um, to speak up a little bit more. But I'll be taking occasional sips of water. Okay, cool. Today we're gonna talk about my favorite topic, uh, trading uh, and supply and demand. A lot of people kind of tend to uh, overcomplicate supply and demand, but it's actually a really simple concept. I mean, essentially, you have something that's for sale, and, uh, and you want to make sure that if you're a seller, that you're selling it for the highest price possible. And if you're a buyer, well, you want to be buying it for the lowest price possible. It doesn't I mean, I mean trading uh, anything, uh, be it a commodity, a currency pair, or bicycles I mean essentially you want to be uh, getting the best deal possible for yourself so you're you're selling high and you're buying low and so uh, when you take this logic and you transfer it over to trading a lot of people think that okay when it goes up then I'm gonna start buying which is pretty um, counterintuitive if you if you revert back to the uh, to the bicycles uh, example um, if you're waiting for people to start buying before you start buying, well, essentially you're getting a worse price. And so what you need to do is you is you need um, you need for price to continue uh, to move higher um, if you're buying. Um, let's see if I can draw. <clears throat> yeah, cool. Okay, this is fine. It's a bit of a thick one. Uh, okay, we'll just use this. So, I mean, if you look at, oops, let's see here. Okay, so if you look at this, for example, a lot of people they'll be looking at this, and they'll they'll see this price bottom, and they'll think, "Well, that's really low," and so essentially, people, hey James, uh, will be looking to at this stage sell. Why? Because price is moving down; it's moving lower, like so, and so they'll be uh, occupied occupied with the fact that while well, this is going down, I want to be selling. But consider how far it's moved. It started here, so this is the the S, the start, and this is the um, kind of the end of the move down here. And so, I mean, moving, sorry, beginning to sell when price is all the way down here doesn't really make a lot of sense. Um, if you have a bicycle, you would want to be taking the, the best price for the bicycle if you're selling, and if you're buying, well, you want to be buying it down here. And so this whole thing about waiting to see what other people are going to do before you do it um, doesn't really uh, work that well in trading because if price is moving down like this and everyone's watching it, um, you never know how far it's going to go. So you have to be able to identify uh, price imbalances, uh, which are essentially disagreements in supply and demand. And you need to be using these as areas where you can see that we have a sudden interest to buy or sell at a given level. Um, and this is essential. Okay, so I can. Okay, cool. So if we look at this here, you can see that. I mean, price is moving sideways for an extended period of time. Um, and what is this? Well, this is agreement. People are pretty pleased with what's going on here. Price is going down, it's going up, it's going down, it's going up. So this is a very efficient uh, price movement. But notice what happens when price comes down here. We see we have these white candles, which are essentially um, something I refer to as um, accumulation. Accumulation of what? Um, positions to move price price lower and so when price got here it moved away like so and so this would be an interesting place to begin to sell should price return to that level why because this was where a sudden increase in selling occurred here so if price comes back up to this price level here well obviously if we focus on what we've seen historically this seemed to be a really good place to start to sell um, the euro Japanese yen and so you essentially put your orders in to sell there and price came pretty close and we were reacting at the lows here and it moved away from there so this is what you're doing and it's it's actually pretty simple a lot of people try to overcomplicate it and to make it uh, this this black art but it really isn't it's just a matter of understanding what you're looking at if you see all of this 
this is not supply and this is the or demand this is pretty efficient trading prices going up it's coming down we have these green candles we have a price in efficiency and imbalance price returns to the origin of the move to rebalance the move before driving price high so this is pretty decent uh, price movement here and this is I mean this there isn't any demand in here um, they could be on the small time frames but on the weekly chart I mean price is just drifting higher and this could be um, interest rate um, uh, swap differentials it could be it could be a number of things but the fundamentals are driving this price higher and then price moved up here you can see we reached this high and then price left and so you think wow I mean this is if you compare this move here to this price action here what does that tell you well, that tells you wow when we got to this price level here people are very keen on selling and so you have to keep that in mind so you might get off and you think wow this is a very price sensitive area when price got up to here people are really looking to sell what does that mean well that goes back to the bicycle metaphor these are really really high prices for bicycles and so if price managers come up there we're going to sell all the bicycles that we have price came close and it took um, a few months for price to get back up there and it finally did and this is where price released from and you'll often see this how price will go up to an area it'll come back and it'll contend we'll have a final push will often go deeper into the area to find even more buyers and then price will release um, release away okay so this is what we're seeing and so what you do then is you um, I mean you have this box here you can see we have pretty pretty decent price trading prices going up oops oh no. going up and down up and down up and down <clears throat> and then it releases and this is the place it releases from so this is your reference point for the future just like we, we, we saw this clue here when price went up it dumped away very quickly price reacted and then it left price came down and we dumped away very quickly and you can see we dumped away very quickly because these white candles or this period of accumulation happened at the lows okay so this is we're accumulating we're consuming liquidity so we are uh, filling orders to drive price lower from here and this is a very important uh, reference point uh, for us in the future okay and so I mean yes while of course I mean price has gone down and people would think wow I'm gonna start selling because why well a lot of people are starting to sell so maybe you start to sell here or here or here but the longer you wait to sell the higher the risk you are taking on uh, for a given trade and so you have to be mindful of these patterns and you can see them absolutely everywhere and this here this is a weekly chart on a four hour one hour chart uh, this is probably going to look something like this and then you're going to see something very similar this let me zoom in a little this little this pin bar here this little white candle this is probably the same as what we saw over here on a much smaller time frame maybe a one hour and a half an hour chart um, and you have the same thing going on here we have we have the same thing going on. we have prices moving sideways like this and price moves away where does it move away from it moves away well this is the origin of the price move and you'll find the more you zoom in to the smaller time frames the more precise you will be able to get your entries and if we have a look at this one here I'm not sure if my broker has data because I'm pretty far out on the weekly chart but I'm just gonna mark that off I'm just gonna mark this from the low to the high like so let's go to the four hours see if I've got data there and we'll scroll back a bit mm. Where are we? I can't do it there, not enough data. I have to go to the daily chart. It should be okay. And on the daily chart, you can see here. You can see exactly what we saw earlier. The white candles, we saw them here. So we can see on the day on the on the weekly chart, I mean price is moving sideways for a pretty long period of time. You can see here. And then it left. Okay, and then you have to go to the small time frame and you find that area that caused um, price to move away from this area of supply and so we can mark that off here we have it just here this is a really nice um, continuation pattern so continuation pattern meaning that the move happens price moves sideways for a little bit 
to accumulate uh, more orders to move price lower, and then it leaves the area. So this is where it happens. So this is going to be um, an area for us to watch in the future. And price uh, touch there in the future. We had two tests, and then price kind of slowly uh, wriggled through it. But we had a pretty decent move. If you consider the size of the area, which is plus, let's say, plus um, some extra pips, 110 pips. I mean, price went down. Uh, 500 so five times that so this is a really uh, a good area to trade because the risk reward of this area is very high which is a, a very important for your trading okay good let's go and have a look at it, something else <clears throat> um, so we have another one here you can see price came down we moved sideways for an extended period of time and so we have an imbalance we have a balance and we have an imbalance. And so you have to constantly kind of be mindful of where these little areas are. Let me use this. So we have this area here, which which could be maybe a, a monthly continuation pattern. Let's have a look. Where are we? So we're just here. You can actually yeah, you can see pretty clearly that this is this is kind of um, kind of the top. Of a, of, of a major swing and then price came down and we moved sideways and then we dumped away so this is pretty pretty accurate on the daily chart we'll go back to it and have a look I can sorry if you get dizzy when I do that I sometimes do okay there it is then you can see the area right here it's a pretty small one it's taking like the low of it right there so price moved away. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that when price returns back to this area, that we can expect price to um, to release and move away from it. And so price did. Price came away, moved sideways, and it came back up closely. This entry might have been missed. And then it moved away from there. But this is exactly what you're looking for. You want to see periods of agreement followed by periods of disagreement. Agreement, disagreement, find these small pauses in price because this is where um, the order flows are starting to accumulate. We're starting to accumulate um, uh, short orders to move price lower. And this is what this is kind of the tale that is being told when you see something like this. Um, you can see these all over the place. Some are messy and some are clean, um, but you'll mostly be looking at messy ones than clean ones. This is a pretty nice picture perfect one here. Um, sometimes you have stuff like this where price kind of yeah you can see it's kind of drifting lower and it kind of releases from here so this is where price release from um, and this is probably more what you'll be seeing um, on the live markets unless so you have something like that so price came up to it close and it kind of charged it and this one went through it um, but there will also be losers to this uh, to this strategy as well so if we keep moving so we have we have all these are going on absolutely everywhere. We have them. I mean, this little piece right here. This is on the daily chart. On the 15-minute chart, this is uh, an agreement in price. How price is going down, going up, going down, going up, and so price is moving up and down here. So this is where price left. But you have to consider also the major flows and the major flows um, for this for the euro yen. Um, when this happened, let's have a look. Go to the monthly chart and have a look. Well, they were they were moving lower. I mean, this happened just after drop in price, accumulation, and then a, a drop lower. And so, of course, you'd have to be mindful of what's going on on the major time frames. Um, good. Okay, let's um, let's continue to move on. Let's see if there's any questions because I don't. If you have any questions, just punch them in here. Um, here. All right, you guys can see those. Good. So we have another one where price we had we had an agreement, disagreement, agreement, disagreement, and so is it difficult to follow me? I'll try and um, I can provide you with some links to some videos um, afterwards, which will kind of help slow this down. Something you can watch uh, like a couple of times. Is that okay, Alexander? Right, so you have, I mean, price is moving away, we're moving sideways for an extended period of time, and then we leave. And notice this is a very important clue that we can see here. When price leaves, notice that it comes down here, and it comes up, we have this test, 
and then price releases. This is important because this is telling us essentially where the edge of the sell zone is. So we have we have something in here that's telling us that we have a, an imbalance in uh, supply and demand. So we have um, strength on the um, to the seller side. And um, so the thin liquidity is to the downside and the thicker liquidity is to the upside. So price moves through thin liquidity easier. And notice how price comes right here to the edge of here, kind of the lows of this, and it turns around from here. This is really important because this is telling us exactly, more or less exactly where the edge of the sell zone is. So if we go to a smaller time frame, remember the four hour chart, Actually, before I do that, I want to mark off the line so I know where we are. Um, where'd we go? Okay, here. So we have it there. Let's go to the four hour chart. We have a look. So I can find that. Lots of pain with MT4 having to race back and forth like so. Here we are. Okay, so, so price comes back and it comes up here. We accumulate. You can see these candles just here. Oh, it's all over the place. It's here, I'll just leave it like this, put it in the middle. So we have price moving sideways for a period of time. So we have again, we have agreement, disagreement. And we have here, this is pointing to the edge of the sell zone. So this is a very important area for us in the future. So essentially you can you can you can mark off for example the high like so. We'll just put something like this. Then this will be a reference point for us in the future. And you can see how price came. It came into it. You can see how price moved into it. And now we started to feed on this liquidity. We started to consume the liquidity. And then price uh, moved away from there. Price actually spent a considerable amount of time at that area before it turned around. But you can see this little tiny pullback is pointing to the area that you should be considering uh, to sell at. So we have the origin, which uh, essentially is we have a kind of a, a kind of a V-shape. We have a move higher, then a move lower. So essentially, you want to be looking towards the top. You want to look for these releases, and then tests, and then departures test and departure. So we had one here and we had another one here. Okay, so we have these two. And so these are two very interesting areas for us. And we marked off this um, this entire area here. And this is essentially where price uh, moved into. Price poked into it. Excuse me. Sorry. Price moved into it. We started to consume liquidity. And from there, price managed to move away. And so it's a pretty, um, I mean, it might look, I mean, uh, Alexander is saying it's difficult to follow. I mean, initially, it is difficult to follow. But you have to remember that, I mean, trading is like riding a bicycle, learning how to do this uh, um, a ramp or skateboard. I mean, it just takes practice. And the more you train yourself, the better you're going to get. And it's not that difficult. You just have to look for these agreements in price, agreement in price, disagreement. Where is a disagreement? Where did it originate from? Here. We'll just mark off this whole area here. So this is an interesting area for us that we can expect price to bounce at, at in the future. You see price came down to it, almost to the pip, and it left. And it looks like magic, but it's not. It really, really isn't. Um, you can see we have another one. Let me remove this one here. We have another one down here. Now price, um, price left. We had a period of agreement, and then price left. This is essentially kind of a micro structure of this. So um, this looks like this on a smaller time frame. Okay, so we have this one here, yet to be tested. You keep going and you can see these white candles I mean they are also these micro patterns. I'll re I refer to them as accumulation. So we have this one here, which is essentially the same as this, which is essentially the same as this, just on a smaller time frame. Where did price come back to? It came back to that area there, and it released. Okay. Good. 
Okay, so a lot of people ask, well, can you automate this? And, uh, and the short answer is, uh, yes, you can. For the past many years, I've been attempting to uh, automate uh, supply and demand trading and with, well, with, with various uh, degrees of success. But um, about the past year, I've managed to come up with something that um, seems to work uh, pretty well. It's still running on small live accounts and uh, many demo accounts so that I can assess its uh, its progress. But it's essentially uh, trading based on these same patterns. So it's looking for patterns like this and it is based almost precisely on on the software, the indicator that I've written here that's showing me these levels. And so we have this one up here. This is the daily area of supply. We have this orange one here which is weekly, weekly supply and within it we have a daily supply that's nested and so I made this an algo trader to help me test the validity of these areas and so the algo trader would would simply run through all of these um, uh, these time frames on all of these currency pairs and it would place orders with uh, various parameters um, that would enable me to, to see which parameters uh, make for valid um, uh, entries and um, and it's working pretty well uh, um, and you can see I mean this is a this is a very good example here we have the weekly area so essentially if you're going to trade this I mean you would be marking off I mean initially you would say well I'll be marking off this but you have to look at the pullback and here we have the deepest the highest high since the release which is here so this would be the area that you'd want to um, look to sell from so this is the beginning of the sell zone and the sell zone continues higher so from here and up Okay, and we can just put it to the edge of the zone because this is what the um, the software wrote, like so. Um, and price came in here, and if we can zoom in a little bit, just to see how price reacted when it came there the first time. As the price moved up into it, we poked into the area. So this is the beginning of the sell zone. You can see the line there, and we accumulated just below the area, and then price popped up, and we came back down. We accumulated and we sold off. The price came back up. We reacted on this. This is a micro uh, pattern. So we have we have disagreement, agreement, disagreement. Price returns to the area of agreement because this is where the orders are accumulating to move price higher and lower. And for this particular uh, pattern here, um, this is an area that people were very interested in selling at. And this is also nested within this daily area that we identified on the daily chart. And so price tested up here. We moved higher. We kept trying to push higher like we saw in the previous example. We moved higher. We moved a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And so we're trying to find people who are looking to sell. And we found some here. So the next test, we're going to have to go at least that high. We went here. And the next test, we're going to have to go at least that high. We went a little bit higher. And this is where price released from. And that's why you'll often see you'll have a level like so. Then price will move up to it. It'll have another go, and it'll have another go. And this is where the the three tops, one, two, three pattern comes from, where price is essentially feeding into pools of bearish liquidity, um, and it's constantly looking for, for people to sell. This is, it's, it's advertising a really high price to sell at. Is this a high price? Well, this is a high price. We have a little bit of interest, but not that much. Okay, we'll, we'll advertise an even better price. So it went up here. Oh, we got a little bit more, and but not enough. So we advertise an incredibly attractive price to sell at. Price goes up there, and this is where people essentially uh, jump in and start to short um, the market from there. <clears throat> and you can see this. Um, and it's happening over and over and over and over again. Here we have another one. Price came down. We have a sideways price movement. Price releases. So we can see that we have a very keen interest in selling from this area here. And so this should be, we should be seeing these and we should be uh, mindful of these on, on whatever it is that we're, look, that we're looking to trade. So we mark this off like so. And keep in mind we have the pullback here. You see how price comes up, it goes deep and then it releases. So we move it up to there because this is the, the beginning of the sell zone and it goes up essentially to the highest high of the area. And then this is where price released from. Okay, and you can see, and so when you're looking at, for example, something like this, let's say, let's just zoom out, and all we can see is this. When you see that, 
I mean, there's nothing to do. There's absolutely nothing to do. So it's best just to walk away and look for something else. Of course, we had a little bit of an imbalance there, a little bit of imbalance here, but I mean, there's nothing really going on here. We still need to return to the lows here and return to the highs here. And so as long as price is trading within this range, you want to be selling at least from the um, from the highs and above and buying from the lows and below. <clears throat> Sorry, frog in my throat. But um, it's just a really bad idea to mess around um, with price when it's looking like this. You have to look for these sharp releases. I can have like a test. A test. Price comes down, we accumulate, and then we release. So this is where price released from, the, from this area here. Um, you see it everywhere. We have another one here. Price came down, we moved sideways, and we left. So this is interesting for us in the future. Price went up, we accumulated, we went up again. Interesting for us in the future. Um, we look at this. This is an extended period of, uh, of agreement. Um, price rallied, we moved sideways, we moved higher. Price poked down into the edge of this area of agreement because this is where um, the buyers enter the market. They thought, wow, this is a really good price to start buying. If price comes back down to this area here, then I'm going to start buying because <clears throat> I got a smoking deal on this bicycle. So it happened once. The second time we went roughly to the same low, then this is where we left from. We have the same thing happening here. Price comes down, we move sideways, and we leave. This is a micro demand. Um, price came back to the area because we had an interest in buying at this price level. Price went up, we moved sideways, we moved up. And you can see this going on all day and it happens on every single time frame. You can go to the minute chart. Maybe it's a bit difficult on the spot FX in the minute chart. We'll go to the five minute chart. You can see the same thing happening where you have price moving up, moving sideways, and price left. Where did it originate from? We well, look at the candles that left those are the green ones and mark off the lows let's mark off the lows like here then you look at the the candle that left and the highest high to the pullback which is here you see just here right there so this is the area that um, the price is telling us that uh, people are looking to sell so this is the edge of the sell zone and so this is your point of reference in the future and I'm cherry picking a little bit just to drive the point home, but uh, but notice here that uh, we had this uh, this period of volatility, likely some news. Um, price came up, and where did it go back to? We well, went up to this one here. How price came up? We're moving sideways. Let me zoom in a little bit. Um, price went up. We moved sideways for a period of time, and then we left. When price left, first of all, we mark off the lows, and this is pretty much where price came back to. So this is an area that we could be looking uh, to sell at when price comes back to it. And price poked up into it and this is where we released from. And note that they normally hold well the first time but the following tests are lower probability and this is because um, I like to refer to this as plates of pancakes. And I'm just going to draw this because this is what I normally like to do where you have um, we have pancakes here and we have pancakes we have the first pancake is here I'll draw all the way over, like so. We have the second one is here, third one, and fourth one. Yes, we have pancakes right here. Yum, I like pancakes. <clears throat> Good, and so you have to consider that when price comes back to it the first time, think of it as a person coming with their fork, and they take the first pancake. Okay, if they take the first pancake off this stack, I mean, where's the next pancake uh, located? So here's the first pancake. Once that's gone, where's the next pancake? Well, the next pancake is here. And so you're going to have to put your entry a little bit further up into the stack of pancakes until you actually find a pancakes that are there. Because once this pancake is taken, it's gone. Once this one's taken, then it's gone. And so now, once this pancake and this pancake have been taken off the plate, well, if you want a pancake, you're going to have to move your fork deep deep into the stack of pancakes. I hope you understand my pancake analogy. Um, I like pancakes. Like that. Okay, so the fork has to go a little bit deeper into the stack of pancakes. And the same applies for the for down here. Now we have pancakes like so. 
So we have people that are looking to get some pancakes. This is a fork. Once this one's gone, the fork has to go down to this one. And once that's gone, it has to go down to this one here. Okay. And so this is why you'll, you'll hear supply and demand traders say that if price has been tested one time, don't test it don't uh, don't test it again unless price has a really nice superficial test so if price does this and it comes down it comes close to it and then it leaves as long as it doesn't kind of move into as long as it doesn't start consuming pancakes taking pancakes well then the pancakes are still on the plate and so should price come back at a later time we can assume again it's a game of probabilities we don't know for sure but we can assume due to the the distribution of liquidity in a market that the pancake is going to be located roughly at the area where price departed from. Okay. Cool. Okay. Good. Well, I'll show you just for just for some fun. I'll show you um the algo trader that I've been working on for a while. And I'll show you some of the some of the trades it's got on. I just funded this small account here so you can you can see what it's doing. Let's going to have a look at these. These are uh, four hour areas of supply. So if we drag this one on here, this is the pound American dollar. Let me zoom out a little. So this is the area that we're the, the, that the robot found to be interesting. Is it saw this and it said this is a nice area. And it is a nice area. You can see how price left. We came back. So price is an agreement. Disagreement. Okay, where did it release from? It released from from here. So this is the place that we're going to look to sell. And notice that the robot placed the entry at the high of the test prior to the release because this is where the next pancake is going to be located. Okay, have a look at the this dollar CAD example. So this one is yet to be filled. So this was a buy. So we had this period of agreement price left. This is a really nice push higher. Um, and price didn't quite make it back to the entry. But we tested it once, twice, three times, and then we found a willing buyers and then price moved away from there. But this is a really decent area, but price has not been into this area that yet. And so I'm going to leave this one on uh, to see what happens. And we have a look at the, the dollar franc. Let's see what's going on there. So we have the same thing going on here how we have a disagreement, agreement, disagreement, agreement, disagreement, a lot of agreement, disagreement. Price came back down roughly to the area and it left. It did not poke into this area. What I don't like so much about this is that there is an, a relatively long period of disagreement. And disagreement essentially means that, let me draw. So if we have pancakes above price, we have pancakes below price. So price comes in, let's say this is the open of the period and this is a close. Price comes in and it moves and it moves up and it starts to eat away. It starts to take not whole pancakes, but bites of these pancakes. So there's a bite gone from the bottom one, a bite from the top one, bottom one. So eventually if a large number of bites are taken out of a pancake, well there's not going to be much of a pancake left here or here. Okay, and so when you see this going on, this is essentially telling telling you that we have bites of the pancakes that have been taken. And so we might want to look to move lower. So this one that looks a little bit more interesting, um, potentially like this. Okay, price went up, we accumulated, we went up, we came down, we're pointing to the edge of the buy zone, and then we moved sideways, then we left. But when price came down to here, it didn't leave quickly. So I would likely move my entry for this um, lower because there's nothing really in here that looks too terribly interesting. Maybe something in here on the smaller time frame, um, but nothing up here. This is not looking too interesting for me. We have a look here at the, the Euro. Excuse me. We have a look, a look here. Okay, we have <clears throat> agreement, disagreement. That price is just returning. God, I got a big toad in my throat. <clears> to <throat> so this area here, we can expect price 
to have a bit of a bounce because when price was here there was a lot of interest in selling so we'll see what happens when price goes there <clears throat> let's take one more then we'll wrap it up before I <clears throat> croak here so if we have a look here we have a tiny area <clears throat> all the way down up here where we have uh, disagreement agreement disagreement when price returned it came here let's be more precise it came back to here and it released from here but if we look back I mean price has not been back there since the release so this would be an interesting area <clears throat> to consider should price return back there yeah, and so you can see as well, I mean, here we have agreement, disagreement. So you mark off the lows, like so, and you look inside this area here and find out exactly where this disagreement occurred. And you can do that. We go and have a look here. You can see that, I mean, here we have it. This is the line, and it kind of originated from here. Price those disagreement agreement disagreement and so this is kind of a small area it's probably clear on the smaller time frames but I won't drill down because we're running out of time but we have something here and we have uh, something up here but this is a little bit messy I don't like this so much but we have this one up here which looks um, looks okay good alright um, yeah and if we if I just show you like um, I mean the results of the robots so far if I just take all the all the trades is that good, Adam? Replace this and chuck it up. It's done tons and tons of trades. And the position size have been tiny the whole time just so I can kind of gauge what's going on. You can see, I mean, most of these are cancelled. This is because um, orders are cancelled. They're set to um, to expire after a certain number of periods. I just don't want orders sitting in the market the whole time. You can see some of these get filled. We find a few... We had a few that were that were filled here. Um, if we look at the the results, I mean, it looks pretty pretty interesting. Um, yeah, but this is it's still kind of early days, but it's a really exciting project. But I'm actually using this now on uh, with my own trading, um, and I let the robot run, and then I go in and manually look at what it's done. Then I'll perform my analysis to find out if it is actually a trade I'm willing to. Um, put my money on the table for, but it's um, it's looking pretty interesting. It's looking very very interesting. Good. Um, let me get find these videos here that I promised. YouTube my videos. I promised that there was um there was one. Okay here. Okay, good. So this is <clears throat> let me just paste this in. Don't want to watch this now. And where is that? Okay, here. So here is that video. This kind of goes over the um, that particular strategy, um, and it's again, it's really, really simple. And um, if if it feels complicated, it means that the market's probably not clear. You should they should be jumping out at you, and you can see agreement, disagreement. You need to focus on the origins of these moves, which are often going to be in disagreement. This is beautiful here. How price came down, accumulation. So uh, disagreement, agreement disagreement this is lovely here we have this is also okay maybe a daily area um, but try and focus on on the stuff that's clear and just drag the pairs over uh, and force yourself to see uh, what's going on and you can see I mean we have a lot of agreement here and this whole move the only disagreement that we see here that looks interesting is is up here we see agreement and price broke away um, this is also you can see how price was agreement but it, it left but price has kind of already been back to this area 
back here. So this is an area that has been visited historically. So this is a lower probability trade. And so you want to look high when price comes back. This is exactly like um, those little uh, pullbacks to an area. So this is actually telling us the beginning of the sell zone. And so essentially you'd want to start to look to sell from here, which brings our attention to this one here. But higher up we have this one, which is even more uh, interesting. Agreement, disagreement, agreement, disagreement. Okay. I think we'll wrap it up there before I have another cough fit. I'm glad you, I can't uh, um, give you my germs via webinars. <clears throat> Good stuff. Well, um, if anyone has any questions, you're welcome to send them to me. Let's put my email in here. And Pipnotic is just a, it's a software company uh, based in uh, in Malaysia, now Malaysia. Um, and um, and I just develop supply and demand uh, software and also a bit of currency strength software as well. But supply and demand is my primary focus. And um, the algo trading we do is based exclusively on, on supply and demand. And it's, it's really interesting. And, uh, and if you want to um, uh, come and have a close look, you're welcome to. I can, um, I can let you come and have a look at some of our, um, our rooms and you can kind of gain, gain a deeper insight into how powerful this supply and demand stuff really is. But it's naked charts, you know, you're focusing on on the agreements and disagreements and essentially you're remembering that you have to take your, your mentality when you're buying a bicycle with you when you're uh, investing in, or not investing, day trading um, uh, currencies, for example. This is just an, a very, very important um, uh, point to make, I think. Good, well, if no one has any more questions, I think I'm going to wrap this up for today. But again, if you have any questions, please feel free to uh, shoot them off to me. Um, otherwise, have a super week. FX Street, thanks again so much, and I will see you all next month. Thanks for watching, everybody.